Good morning from Unity of New Orleans at 3722 St. Charles Avenue. Let us open with our invocation by Unity co-founder Charles Fillmore. We are now in the presence of pure being and immersed in the Holy Spirit of life, love, and wisdom. We acknowledge thy presence and thy power, O blessed Spirit, and thy divine wisdom now erase my mortal limitations, and from thy pure substance of love bring into manifestation our world according to thy perfect law. And our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. What this means is the subject of today's truth lesson, which is entitled Peace, Unity, and Love. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done certainly means to manifest this peace, unity, and love. Well, it's been a challenging few weeks in New Orleans and around the world. We in New Orleans are fighting COVID-19 on one front, social injustice on another, and predictions for flooding in a storm on another. So it's been a time when many people have felt stressed. In terms of George Floyd, Ahmaud Arbery, and Breonna Taylor, we're seeing what happens when people don't live with peace, unity, and love in their hearts. At Unity, we talk a lot about the health effects of negativity, hatred, and unforgiveness. Well, in the past few weeks, we've seen the effects manifested in another way on the material plane, murder, chaos, and turmoil. We shall overcome when we as a people heal our hearts. This is what will heal our society because society is a lot of individual hearts. And this is why we as a group at unity with others on the spiritual path need more than ever to set the example of peace, unity, and love, which must prevail or this kind of chaos will continue to threaten us as individuals and as a society. I am so proud of our city for the way we've been working in unity to observe the health recommendations that were issued to help fight COVID-19, which resulted in our moving from being number one on the pandemic hotspot list to number 10 in a short period of time. Working in unity produced results. It always does. United we stand, divided we fall. Both social injustice and COVID-19 have to be fought. Most people agree on that. But as spiritual citizens, we must do it in unity with peace and love in our hearts so that we don't hurt ourselves and others while trying to help. It is so easy to feel negative toward those we aren't in agreement with or don't understand, not only in terms of how to fight COVID-19 and social injustice, but on every level of life. But part of our spiritual path is to do so wisely and compassionately. No one ever wins a war. Unity of New Orleans is a microcosm of the world's macrocosm. We are a widely divergent group of cultures, races, and even spiritual paths. But Unity members work together in peace unity and love because we know that this is the only way we can function and succeed as a group. 
For this reason, I beseech you to please go out into your community and share what you have learned here. Show people in your family, your neighborhood, your workplace that it is normal for people of different races, cultures, and creeds to live and work together. Show them how to work together to find commonalities and not dwell on differences. In a historical sense, these recent problems are not new to the world. They are actually the history of the world. But we have advanced since the days when tribes and armies marauded each other's villages and countries nonstop, enslaving the children, killing the men, and using the women. And we don't want to go back to those days. That's why people are marching. You are one of the most loving, forgiving, and accepting groups in the city in terms of accepting people of all religions, races, creeds, and genders. I hope that you let these challenging times remind you of the importance of your sharing your sense of this everywhere you go. You can make a difference. Now, more than ever, we need to help others see that even in the midst of seeming chaos and uncertainty, these values can and must be maintained. It's easy to be spiritual when you live in a cave in India or an ashram or monastery somewhere nestled in some quiet place with other loving, peaceful people. The hard part is doing it when we go out there in the world, learning to walk the talk when you're walking with those who aren't. It's a challenge, but that's how we learn to fly spiritually. And fly we must, and fly we can. It's the only dance there is, as Ram Dass says. New Orleans, like Unity, is a family of great diversity. Many races, creeds, and religions. We live, we study, celebrate, and worship together. We're a family, and as with any family, we have issues. But I believe there is an underlying understanding in this city and at Unity that doesn't exist in most places which is why our demonstrations for social justice work peacefully for the most part. We have a long history of spiritual values in New Orleans, and brotherly love is at the core of all spiritual values. Part of brotherly love and action is defending those who are in need. So last week, people exercised their right to do that. And I hope these latest incidences of violence will open everyone's eyes to what continues to be needed. And most of what is needed is at the individual level. It was individuals who caused these problems initially, and as individuals they will be dealt with, but all the laws in the world won't help if individuals don't abide by them, and they won't when their hearts don't foster peace, unity, and love. Maybe we can all start noticing our own negativity, prejudice, unforgiveness, or triggers so that we don't snap when confronted with certain situations like some of the police around the country have done. It's far too late when things happen. We need to work on ourselves ahead of time so that when we are confronted with our own challenging situations, we can maintain our cool and react with wisdom, peace, and within the construct of unity. We are all presented with small situations, just like the large ones that have been happening in our country in the past few weeks. But if we don't work on ourselves ahead of time, we risk reacting just as poorly with anger, misunderstanding, or old programs in our personal situations. There is no good that can come out of the recent murders and police brutality, but let us at least gain wisdom in our personal microcosm 
from the macrocosmic events. Let's prepare ourselves for higher and wiser ways of dealing with people and situations that we personally encounter. And we don't want to react with anger, ignorance, or vengeance. If we respond, for example, by gossiping about someone, being hateful toward them or rejecting them when they do something we don't like or aren't in agreement with, we are basically doing the same thing in a small way that was recently done in a big way. And often it is due to a total misunderstanding, just as in the cases the world is marching about. This is where our spiritual path and self-honesty will help us grow so that we personally won't react in the same way as those who murdered George Floyd, Ahmaud Arbery, and Breonna Taylor. How are we treating others when they do something that we perceive as being against us? Are we coming from a place of peace, unity, and forgiveness? How are we training our inner police force to react when we encounter a seemingly threatening situation? Do we even see it as possibly only a seemingly threatening situation? Do we dare to think we're wrong about the other person? Do we have the courage to think we might be wrong? This is what a true spiritual practice is. And on a personal level, often the problems we have with others are misunderstandings. Peace and unity. May that be our mantra. And unity is often found when we open our minds and objectively see the other person and the situation for what it really is. All these events were caused by ignorance in the beginning. Some of you may remember that old song, to know, no, no one is to love, love, love one. And that brings us to the other theme for today, love, the kind that so many people search for. Everyone wants to be loved. The truth is it's everywhere, especially during this Corona-19 time Many people have told me that they have felt lonely and isolated. They feel stressed because of the recent events. We often forget that the best way to find love is to be love. That's what attracts love. It's like a magnet. There are so many people out there who want and need love and friendship. There is a vast, vast reservoir of friends waiting for you if you just open up to them. We're all feeling the stress. We all want to be close with other people right now. I'm reminded of a story about an old-time sailing ship that was trading in what to the sailors was a new land, South America. The ship found itself stalled for weeks just east of what is now Brazil. There was no wind to push it to shore, and its sailors were baking in the scorching tropic sun. They were unable to reach land, and their supply of fresh water was gone. The men were doomed to dehydration. Then at one point, a local vessel drifted near the helpless ship, and the dying sailors screamed, Please give us some of your water. Please, we're dying of thirst. The local sailors then gave the destitute sailors an amazing piece of information. They told them that they were sitting in the mouth of the mighty Amazon River where it empties into the sea. This river is so vast that its water extends 200 miles out into the Atlantic. Although they could not see land, the ship and its crew were dying of thirst, adrift in a sea of fresh water. All they had to do was lower their buckets over the side. These sailors believed themselves to be helplessly doomed, but they were literally surrounded by exactly what they needed. And such is our case in terms of love. Many people think they can't find new friends, yet they are adrift in a sea of plenty. Everyone wants true, loving people in their lives. 
all we have to do is be love and open up to love. Sometimes we feel lonely or like there's nothing out there for us when we are literally surrounded by what we need if we'll just take it. Sometimes we have to let go of feeling like we don't deserve it or like people won't like us. But when we do see with new eyes, love is everywhere. Just be the love and you'll attract it to you like a magnet. Wherever you look, there are people who will love you if you're just willing to reach out to them. That's been the problem with recent events. People aren't in a space where they want to connect and understand with and understand others and love them. But everyone needs more people to love in their lives. They need people to relate to and share with. They need someone to smile, listen, and laugh with them, just like you do. As spiritual people, if we reach out to God, if we just reach out to others who are part of God, our lives will not have this kind of chaos in them. And if there are problems with these people that we might perceive as problems, embrace them, work it out with them. That's how we grow. That's how the world will be able to live in peace. We must be willing to get out of our preconceived concepts about other people who are different from us. We must not judge them according to our conditioning. We must forgive them when they do not know what they do sometimes. We must go into new relationships with people with our hearts and minds wide open. That's how we invite love into our lives. Friends multiply joy. They divide sorrow. Have you ever felt that there's no one that you can really talk to, that there is no one you can really enjoy being with? Maybe in those times when you feel like those sailors on the ship who were dying of thirst, when fresh water really surrounds you? I want to share a story that I recently read about Eleanor Roosevelt, the wife of President Theodore Roosevelt. Eleanor was born in an extraordinarily rich family. Almost immediately, she was set apart from the other children because she thought she was homely. Because of that, she automatically thought other people would not like her, so she stayed by herself. She grew to be painfully shy. She was painfully shy even when she met Franklin Delano Roosevelt, the future president. Then she became his wife. He was in politics and was on his way up the success ladder. Eventually, he became president of the United States. The political people came to her and said, Mrs. Roosevelt, you're going to have to go out and make appearances. She answered, oh, well, I can't. There's no way I can go out. I cannot face those people. They won't like me. What would I say to them? What would I do? They kept asking, and she refused time after time. Then finally, she said, okay, I'll go, but I'm going to be a miserable failure. She arrived and stood in front of the people and smiled. They loved her. She later said that she never felt so connected with people. She went over that imaginary wall that she had made herself, as we all do, and she felt connected and at one with other people. She soon was surrounded by more friends than she had ever known in her entire life. She enjoyed life and was a huge success. The whole country loved her. Eleanor said, many of us stay walled in because we're afraid of being hurt. We're afraid to care too much for fear that the other person won't care about us. In the Bible, in John 15, it says, This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. This often involves laying down our concepts of ourselves and others. Our lives involve other people. We may appear to be separate, but that is an illusion. We may appear to be individual islands in a vast sea, but that is an illusion. We are all one. 
there is something unseen beyond the physical that connects us all. In 1965, a college professor at Johns Hopkins told a sociology class, students, I want you to do something for me. I want you to go into the slums of Baltimore, Maryland, and I want you to do a case study of some of the boys you find there. As a matter of fact, with the students here in this class, I want 200 case studies done. So they went out and did their 200 case studies of the boys they found. In all of the 200 cases, the students said the same thing about the boys that they had interviewed. They said they haven't got a chance. 25 years later, they found this old case study of the 200 boys who did not have a chance. In 1990, another sociology professor came across the earlier study and he had his students follow up to see what happened to all the boys that they had interviewed. Out of 200 boys, 20 of them had moved away to undisclosed locations or died. That left 180. Of the 180 remaining boys, 176 were amazing successes as lawyers, doctors, and businessmen. The professor was astounded. He wanted to pursue the matter further. Fortunately, the men studied were all in the area, so he went to interview them himself. He asked them, what is it? Why are you such a big success? 25 years ago, they said there was no hope for you. The same reply came back from many of those men. There was this teacher. The teacher was still alive. She was old but very alert. The professor went to the teacher and asked her, what was the special formula you used to help these boys move out of the slums into successful lives? The teacher's eyes sparkled and her lips broke into a gentle smile as she said, I simply loved those boys. And that is how we will change the world and ourselves. One person at a time, one day at a time, expressing God's love. That's what obeying the eternal laws means, expressing love, peace, and unity. Our Unity Peace Song says, let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. Mother Teresa said, spread love everywhere you go. Be the living expression of God's kindness in your eyes, in your face, your smile, and your warm greeting. Teilhard de Chardin said, the day will come when after harnessing space, the winds, the tides, and gravitation, we shall harness for God the energies of love. And on that day, for the second time in the history of the world, we shall have discovered fire. So light up your world with peace, unity, and love. And remember, you are not walking this path alone. You are walking with God and with God's children. Let's all demonstrate together for peace, unity, and love in everything we do and say this week. Be a light unto the world. It needs your light. And you need to remember how much of it you are. Let us pray. Dear God, I realize this is going to take more courage possibly than I have at the moment to go this extra mile and do what is being shared today. Help me to be a new friend to others and to encourage peace and unity everywhere I go. With your help, dear God, I will do it. When I see that stranger, I ask you to guide me and to put the right words in my mouth Help me to remember that everyone needs more love, peace, and unity in their lives. I admit that I need it too. 
companionship, laughter, and joy. I ask for that now. I ask you to guide my life toward love, compassion, peace, happiness, and a feeling of unity and understanding with all beings. I understand that to give more, I need your help. I consent to your help. I'm willing to see things in others differently as you would have me see them with Christ's vision. And I thank you for this vision. Amen. <coughs> Today, to begin our time of meditation and prayer, please join me in a moment of silence in memory of George Floyd, Ahmaud Arbery, and Breonna Taylor. Now imagine that you are on a road. It is a special garden thoroughfare. You are on this road by yourself, on foot. This is the road of your life. You can look back and see the road that started when you were a baby, the road that continued when you were a young child, and the road that is right under your feet right now where you are in life. You see the road ahead of you too and the flowers you are yet to see on this wonderful garden of life. Behind you, you see the way of, that your life used to be and you see the messages that were given to you along the way. The many people telling you to be careful of strangers, to stay by yourself, to not make contact with people you do not know. You see messages that were given to you of the danger that is out there for you to be aware of and other people to be aware of. These were elementary lessons of elementary levels of mind. Now you realize something very different, that those messages are all in the past. They no longer need to protect you in full adult form. On this road you are standing on now, there are no such messages, only those in your mind. Where you are right now, you hear the voice of God coming to you. The voice of God says to be a light unto the world. It is time as an adult to shine your uniqueness to all people, not just those whom you know. In this moment, in prayer, in the spiritual silence that is in between the words, you feel a special touch of God. All the fear and anxiety of meeting strangers passes away from your physical body, dissipates, is transmuted into a higher energy, an energy of fearless God love, accepting loving, harmony, unity, perfect love casts out fear. Dear God, here I am in prayer. Prepare me for the journey that I am to walk into the future with. Dear God, I give you my body. I lay down my life for you as I lay down my former opinions, prejudices, concepts about who I am and who I believe others are. I ask that you infill me with that knowledge that we are all one on this journey of life, unity, unified. Therefore, I pray that with your help, Walking with you, I will not wall myself in, but that I will step out into the freedom that you allow. Love will flow through me to other people and to me from others if I abide in this. I will accept that love just as I accept your love, dear God. Dear God, of my human self, I may not know the words to say when I walk up to a stranger. 
So please give me the words. I give you my actions. Dear God, I know that there are others around me who need me. They need me because they are lonely and they feel so very separated and alone on their path of life, especially now in these times of anxiety, uncertainty. Dear God, make me a blessing to them. Help me change a life by simply being there and consenting to your power coming through me. Right now in this prayer, I consent to meeting new friends and making new friends by becoming a friend myself first. And my, may I accept all people as potential friends. I want to be a light to my world. I want to spread kindness and love from this physical body. I pray that I will shower all who come in contact with me with real blessings of love and peace and unity. I pray that every person who leaves my sight and my presence will have been blessed and feel blessed. Dear God, come through me, come through my every thought and through every cell of my physical body temple so that I can be a blessing and help others realize that it is not me but you coming through me. From this moment on, I will view people I do not yet know as potential friends, people I can love and touch. God, I cannot do this alone, but I know you can do all things through me. I know we are all interconnected through your divine love. I know that we are all immersed in your presence. Therefore, who am I to separate myself? Who am I to say I am an island or that I cannot be one with another? I give over my life to you now. With joy, I give you my life to use. I am on my way toward more happiness, more love, more peace, more friends than I have ever experienced before on my path of life. I am ready for the blessings. I prepare for this right now in prayer. Upon this I build my future. Upon this I meet all new people. Upon this I am excited about life its potential and its opportunities. Thank you, dear God, for making me aware again of the potential for peace, unity, and love that is all around me, everywhere present, and help me to manifest this peace, unity, and love everywhere I go and with everyone with whom I come in contact. With your help and my commitment, it will be so. Amen.